Salutations. I'm Fire, and this is part four of my guide on playing Rogue's Tale. This is the problem with recording roguelikes. I forgot to start my recording right away, and I moved a tiny bit. I ended up in a trap, which gave me the last tip. I'm in a bear trap, and I got the interface dog, which now blesses your weapon. It only blesses the main hand weapon. It won't bless when you get the starting bow or the staff. It will only do your dagger or once you unlock the sword, it will give you the sword as blessed, which allows you to do two enchants. And also it has one more durability it can take damage from. So I got out, you take damage sometimes when you're sitting in bear traps. And now we start our dungeon. Forgetting to start my recorder right away made me think of a term I feel a lot of people use incorrectly now called save scumming. Save scumming is where you back up the files of your save and then if you die, because those files get deleted in roguelikes, you then copy those files back into the save folder and so you're able to start back uh, from where you had backed up those files. A lot of people use it for other games now where it's like you save and load, but that's not really save scumming because you're doing it within the rules of the game. Save scumming is not within the rules of the game. I should have mentioned this earlier about agility builds. One thing I was confused about early on with agility, you can use a shield, but you'll do less damage because you're not using a weapon with two hands but you can only use a small weapon if you're using a shield. You can't use a medium weapon when using a shield. That That's off of strength if you use a medium shield. So that's one thing to be aware of. This guy, he moved twice. That means he has haste. So that ring is almost most definitely a ring of haste. So I'm gonna do something you shouldn't do with jewelry unless you're pretty certain what it is. Like something like a ghost form, you could tell. I'm equipping it. And I'm right, it is a Ring of Haste because I I knew pretty much with certainty it was a Ring of Haste. Otherwise, never equip rings or amulets that you don't know what they are because it could be one of the ones that binds to you. They're cursed, but they also bind to you, not like a regular cursed item, which increases your critical failure modifier. And those are only for jewelry and that's why you should never equip jewelry unless you're certain you know what it is or already have it identified. One last thing on shields. There's the minimum and maximum block modifier on shields. Generally, you won't ever get into the maximum block modifier if you're not playing a strength build because to get at least a two block modifier of a shield only has a minimum block modifier of one you have to have nine strength. That gives you a two strength modifier. Seven's the base, which is zero for all the stats. And then once you get past seven, then you get a uh, plus to your modifiers for that stat. So with the minimum block modifier, you'll always get that regardless of what your strength is. And the best shields have a minimum block modifier of two. And that also increases your deflect modifier, which makes you harder to hit from range. And so that's why it's, it's not a bad idea to keep a shield if you're playing as say like a blade fairy and you can't close in on something right away. You could switch to a shield and let them run out of energy or arrows and then close in on them. And then if you're playing as strength, you're Maximum block modifier can never be higher than what the shield is. So if the shield only has a maximum block modifier of two, you won't say get three block if your strength is 10. You have to have a shield that has at least a three maximum block modifier or higher. The best shields have a maximum modifier of five. And again, if you're using a medium weapon with a shield, that will be off of strength, not agility. So make sure you keep that in mind. By the way, I dropped items on top of the dead bodies and then picked them up because then that will make blood pools. And that makes more blood caps spawn over time. When there's a pool of blood, a blood cap has a chance to spawn 
on top of that pool of blood. These type of floors are nice because they have a good amount of treasure in them, so I'm getting some decent loot here. Now that I have crafting unlocked, I can get the items you need, the uh, crafting materials, and a guaranteed way to get a piece of wood is if you break a chest when it's locked. It will always give you a piece of wood, but it's a pretty high roll. If you're not strength, you pretty much need to get a critical on it, which means you need to roll a 12 with a two six-sided dice roll. And so that's why I didn't break it. But yeah, so now I can gather wood and all the other materials and you can get wood by breaking down doors, the chest, anything that's wooden, you'll get wood from breaking that. A solid first floor for uh, rings. And I also got a bow, which is good. So I'm going to sell the spell book. Those sell for a lot. And I got three rings on the first floor, which is nice. Two of them are really good. The ring of resilience is just useful for giving me instant death protection, but I'll leave it on even though it's pretty rare except for a couple of times, but you always want instant death late game with the blessed ring of scholars. The normal ring of scholars only does spell books and scrolls. The blessed ring of scholars will identify everything in the arcane tab in the shop, the six tab in the shop. It will do potions, wands. It's great. It's a very good item to help me generate some money. So now I won't have to identify any of those things. Would have been nice to have known it before I identified that spell book. That would have saved me 20 gold. But now I should be able to generate an okay amount of money and hopefully get some enchantments early on. So uh, about haste effects. When you have a haste effect, your food and water consumption is doubled. And then with the ring of haste, it's doubled again. So it's actually quadrupled when you use the ring of haste. So that's why I equip it and unequip it. And I should have had it equipped before I opened that door. You should always equip it before you open a door. And when you're moving in unsafe territory and then unequip it when you're in safe territory. The problem is I haven't got any armor yet and so I'm very vulnerable. So I have all this nice jewelry. Yeah, I got two guys to kill here and I'm down to one life. Oh God, I'm probably gonna die. Oh, yes! Oh, we survived that. And we get an amulet to boot. Oh man, that was close. Judging from the layout, this looks like another good floor for treasure. So hopefully I can get some armor and some more nice jewelry. Jewelry, in my opinion, is the key to succeeding early on. The other runs, I hadn't got anything that useful as far as jewelry besides like the ring of elements. This game's starting off much better. and Hopefully it can continue and we got some armor and we have a better weapon now too for our non-ranged attack. I came back to town because I want to figure out what my amulet is and it's an amulet of divination and it's not damaged either which is nice or, or worn as it would say so it can take damage twice before breaking. So with an amulet of divination I can now identify an item every 60 turns. I'm going to identify my equipment. I see I have a cursed axe. So I'm going to identify it all and see if it's cursed or not. That way I can know if I want to use it long term. And I get poisoned, which is great. I went back to town right away because I also have a paralytic poison. And I don't want to try to wait out the poison because I'll get paralyzed and then I won't be able to do anything and I might die while I'm paralyzed so I'm just gonna cure it I'm not gonna use my potion I always try to use that as a last resort to use my amulet of divination I press C and then I selected the arcane items tab and I pressed 2 to set it as my hotkey 
for the number two. So now to use it, I just press two whenever I want to identify an item. And that is how I use my amulet. Back on the second floor here. Gonna keep on exploring it. And we have some bear skin here. That was off of an orc trapper. You can also find bear skin when you kill a bear, you'll get one or two pieces. And then when you disarm a bear trap, if you roll a crit, you'll get some bear skin. Bear skin's one of the crafting materials. If you have things that increase your critical hit modifier, you will be more likely to find the materials, like say when you disarm a bear trap, or if you disarm the alarm traps, you can find scrap off of those, or the magic traps will give you magic, uh, the soul gems. And if you have a higher critical hit, you'll find much more of the materials off of disarming those traps. I'm getting back as far as I can to increase the range so the archer hits me less. And because I have to kill the spider too. Now the archer ran out of arrows. And so I'm not too scared and I critically hit them and I kill the archer. I was dumb again and forgot to equip my ring of haste before I opened the door. So I ended up having to equip it while I was already in combat, which is not ideally what you want to do. And I found a ring and I'm able to identify it. This is one of the rings that binds to you. So you do not want to equip it. If you have one of these equipped and you enter combat, there's a very good chance you're going to die. So I'm going to throw it against the wall. You don't need to do that, you can just drop it. But I pressed F to throw the item and threw it against the wall, which then destroys it so I don't have to worry about seeing it and then accidentally equipping it or something. And I foolishly forgot to unequip my ring of haste, so my food and water really decreased a lot. I'm in risk of having to eat and drink things other than the blood caps. I mean, I'm trying to do the heritage where you get to level 20 without eating or drinking anything but the blood caps. So now I might have to use food and water instead of just the blood caps. That's the risk of the ring of haste. But normally, as long as you're unequipping it, if you're also eating food and water, eating and drinking food and water, not just the blood caps, then you'll be able to have enough food generally without a problem. It's only since I'm using the blood caps that it's getting really tight and risky and then me forgetting to unequip the ring was not very helpful. That damage we saw there is probably because the dog's starving. Enemies can starve too, not just you. And in fact, NPCs seem to turn aggressive once they're starving. You used to be able to starve encounters to death, but they stopped that from happening. But that was pretty funny. But yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. That's why you'll see the animal enemies will eat the blood caps off the ground. And so that's why I start trying to kill the snells and stuff so they don't eat my blood caps. And good, we got a well, which means I can take both dark vision and keen eyes since wells do not break when you use them, unlike the other training areas, which will break after you use them once. Now with keen eye, I don't have to search for traps nearly as much, or I cannot search for them at all. But like I said, I like to have 10 stamina before I totally stop searching for traps because you'll still land on them occasionally at 9. At 10, it's really rare that you'll land on a trap with keen eye. Good. A studded helmet. That means I'll get now two dodge because when I'm wearing the chain helmet, I only get one dodge because it's heavier armor. And another ring. Yes. See all those rooms? on the top and bottom, those all contain treasure. So hopefully we will get many more useful items out of this floor. I am able to identify another item. So let us see what the ring is that I got. It is a ring of outcasts. 
which really isn't that useful of a ring. It can have three enchants on it, but that's the only effect you get is from the enchants. I'd much rather have something like a ring of fortitude, which gives me life, fair, and sleep immunity. So I'm probably just going to sell it at some point. Almost never use, actually, I never use rings of outcast ever. And I found another schematic, so now I can learn a new piece of equipment to craft as well. So that's good. What will the schematic bring us? Ornate armor. That's the heaviest armor. It's the same as plate armor, except now you can have one dodge if your agility is eight. You also left click or drag to bring in the materials so that way you don't have to hold them on. So I got one more bear skin now. And don't forget, I can store my gold now, which is quite nice. Now I don't have to carry my gold anymore. And I'm dropping all the items here that I have identified. The reason being, I want to get to level 8 so I can get my charisma up to 7. That way the items will sell for more. And that Blessed Tome of Frozen Orb, it will teach me two spells if I have the Draconic Spell Tree. It will teach me Frozen Orb and then a random spell in the Draconic Spell Tree. But I have to spend a talent point to learn the Draconic Spell Tree. So I probably won't be using it in this game because first you also have to have Literacy Common before you can learn any of the other literacies. So it will sell for a lot. Blessed items sell for 50% more. So it will bring in a good amount of gold, especially once I get my Charisma up some more here getting yet more loot from the second floor and we have a ring oh yes in my opinion this is the best low level ring in the game the fair immunity is super good anytime and then you get life for whatever your modifier is so at level seven i get a plus three to my life so it gives me a plus three life modifier. So I am extremely happy. We are getting lots of good jewelry in this game. And I got some undamaged leather armors. So that way my armor now won't break when it takes damage. It will be able to take damage once before it breaks. So that's good. I'm going to equip the ring of haste before I begin this next floor. And we have a lava floor. I might reset if I didn't have the fear immunity. I also like to have confuse immunity. That way I don't get confused or feared into the lava. Good, there's guys of different races. That's the way they'll kill each other. But I'm going to kill the mage. That way it doesn't kill that guy and then kill me. And then now I can attack this guy from range and kill them without taking any damage. And we get some more arrows going to attack the dire wolf with the axe so I can serve my ammo. Got level eight. Now we can sell items for more money. Excellent. Trying to go to the next floor there. If you there's enemies in sight, you can't go to the next floor or the previous floor, I should say, or teleport back to town. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you get them out of sight or if you're hidden using a scroll or a silent move you can go back up to town if enemies are in sight otherwise you won't be able to go back up to town you say tomato i say tomato you say daemon i say demon i probably would be dead if i didn't have that ring of fortitude it's feeling quite amazing right now having that ring because first i had that undead and then now i got a demon now i got two demons if i attacked that demon and i got feared I go into the lava because you run in the opposite direction of the enemy from where you're attacking. So that demon I just killed, I'd run to the right because I'm attacking it from the left. You always want to make sure your back is to a wall when you're attacking enemies that have a chance of fearing you if you don't have fear immunity and you're on a lava floor. Confuse isn't so kind. You just walk randomly. So I just might randomly run into lava if I get confused. So that's still a worry. So I'm going to try to stay away from lava when there's enemies around, if at all possible. By the way, spells that critically hit you do not confuse you. So at least with spellcasters, you don't have to worry about 
confusing when you get a critical hit done on you. So I found a Ring of Immunity, which is one of my favorite rings in the game. Sometimes you'll find rings that have two enchants on them. Normally they have to be blessed, but occasionally you'll find one off an enemy that has two enchants on it. When you try to enchant one of the pieces of jewelry that's not blessed, but has two enchants on it in town, it's just like enchanting a piece of blessed jewelry in that you'll get two options, one to change one of the two enchants, and then the third option is just two random enchants. You can pick from one of those, just like enchanting a blessed piece of jewelry. I like the Ring of Immunity because it makes me immune to curses, which undead mages do, poison, and disease effects. So I can still take damage from poison and disease, say from the spells, but I can never get one of those status effects. So now I can pick mushrooms and safety without having to worry about getting poisoned with the ring of immunity, or I can pick chess as well. Nothing will give me the poison effect. I can only take poison damage and I get my resistances up to poison and disease by one. If your body has three poison resistance on it, you will never get poisoned by the mushrooms. And I also think chess as well, though that one I'm not sure of. But if you can get your poison resist up to three by other means, you'll never get poisoned by picking mushrooms. I hate orc grunts. Luckily, I take it down easily. I made sure I equip the ring of haste before I opened the door. These hidden hallways and rooms, the, the hallway part always has a trap or almost always has a trap somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to make sure I search a little bit extra to find it. And we have a fire elemental re-equipping the ring of haste so I can easily get away from its aura. And it lands on the spike trap. We down it easily. Elementals are pretty easy when you're an archer and you have a ring of haste. As long as you got some room to move back, they're cake. They're super easy. Here we are back in town. I found another schematic. It gave me the riveted helm. This is the same as the studded helm, except now it gives me one more dodge. And like I said before, if you get the crafting heritages, the one for helmets in particular, it will allow me to craft a blessed version of that. But I have to find more of the schematics before I can even complete that heritage. Now I shall enchant some items, starting with my Ring of Fortitude. The knockback immunity is pretty worthless. I'm not too big on physical resistance, but it will be okay at this point. It will help me survive a bit better. So at least we got a little bit more of that, but I would have much rather had either agility, more life, or charisma would be useful so I could get some more money. See, I got some wood here that I can either store by left clicking, pressing enter, or dragging it. Enchanting my bow next. Shock damage would be okay at this level. It starts getting bad as you get higher up unless you have one of the charms that doubles your shock damage when you have it enchanted on a weapon. I'm going to take sleep. Even though sleep isn't that great, because when you hit an enemy again when they're asleep, they'll wake up. But it will be able to stop enemies in their tracks sometimes. So I like it. At least it's something to stop an enemy. I would have rather had something like agility to help me do more damage and miss less often. Enchants cost 100 gold right now. But if in a single game you learn every enchant, they'll then only cost 80 gold. I'm going to do my helmet next. That would be the next most useful thing. I don't want to do my armor because I'd rather have studded leather armor. Polymorph is slightly useful. The shock's not very useful on the helmet. So I'm doing confuse immunity. That's like I've said before, you want confuse and fear immunities as soon as possible. Confuse is probably the most important, but fear is right up there as well to be immune to both those. So now I won't fear lava floors at all or get confused and then die because I can't control my character for a couple of turns. Just checking out my modifiers and immunities. Again, you do that by pressing control when you're 
cursor is over your inventory. I have a scroll of knowledge. I'm going to save that for later when I get literacy common. That'll teach me a random knowledge or it can also teach you a random spell. So I will save that for right now. And I'm going to show you how to get scrap. This leather armor I'm going to throw it against the wall. If you have an item identified, it will give you scrap 100% of the time if it's a piece of equipment. If it's not identified, you have to roll a critical to get it. So the higher your critical modifier is from enchants, the better chance you have of getting scrap from unidentified items, just like with all the other materials for crafting. So if it's identified, you get scrap 100% of the time. If not, you will hardly ever get scrap unless you have some critical. Going to the next floor, re-equipping my ring of haste before I go down and I'm searching three times to make sure I don't land on a trap. I heard something moving. The guy is aggressive, so I'm gonna move all the way back to have as much distance as I can. And my sleep proc, my bow also took damage, so now it will break if it takes damage again. I found some chain armor. I'll use that for right now, but I really want studded armor so I get the extra dodge, because as we saw last game, I took 14 damage from an orc, and one more physical resistance won't save me, but one more dodge will save me. In chain armor, I only get one dodge, while in studded armor, I get two dodge. Hopefully I'll get the riveted armor to craft, that way I can have three dodge once I get my agility up to 10. I applied slowing poison to my bow, it just did that by left clicking or you can press enter once you have the poison identified like i said before if you don't have poisons identified you'll just drink them and then you'll get poisoned so you always have to have poisons identified before you're able to apply them to your weapon this floor was pretty boring so we're going on to the next floor i have an orc archer doesn't see me yet I'm going to move down and I'm going to line of sight the archer because there is the dire wolf and going to switch to my axe and just close in on the archer with the ring of haste. It's not too big of a deal. And archers usually don't hit that hard at the earlier levels unless they get the piercing proc that can happen with the arrows where it totally pierces through your armor. Which is another reason I'm not too big on physical resistance because of the piercing attack or crushing also on a weapon halves your physical resistance when they're attacking. So it it's just, I'm not the hugest fan of physical resistance. It's, I mean, later on, it's pretty much pointless with a lot of the things. So I found a ring. Let's hope it's something useful. Where is it? There it is. It is a blessed ring of sustenance. With this equipped, my food and water will never go down, ever. So now I don't have to really worry about food anymore. I can keep on moving around in the dungeons freely when there's no enemies around. When there's enemies around, obviously I'm going to use one of my better rings but that's why juggling the rings is a, a good idea to be able to tackle as many situations as possible. I'm going to sell some items here to be able to craft a new bow because I don't want my other bow to break and then not be able to shoot any arrows, even though I don't have aim shot yet. So the crafted weapons, they all have the sturdy modifier on them. So they'll take damage much less often. I also want to enchant it. So I'm going to try to generate some money to be able to enchant it as well. One thing you've got to remember to keep in mind when you're selling items is the shops have limited space. So when they fill up, you have to sleep at the end to reset the items. So you also want to try to sell items of different types if possible. That's not always going to be possible, but... And I want to generate 100 gold so I can get the enchant on my new bow. I'm not going to sell that sword 
it's blessed and it sells for a lot. I'm going to see if I can get my charisma up more before I sell it. And I'm going to sell these other items. Like the Ring of Outcast. That's not too useful. Energy. Meh. Nah. Fear is, fear is pretty good. I'm going to use my other bow until it breaks. And then I'll use my new bow. So for right now, I'm staying with my old bow. But at least we're getting pretty well equipped with everything, really. Just need to get aim shot to be able to start doing some good damage. Now that I don't have to worry about food nearly as much, I can leave my ring of haste on much more. So I, when I'm exploring new areas, I'm going to leave it on a lot more without unequipping and re-equipping it like I was before. There's an orc miner. They never have heroic charge, which is good. So that means they won't close in on you like the orc grunts do from two spaces away. And I keep on getting sleep procs on it. And it's poisoned, which means it's slow. And it never even stood a chance with my haste and the sleep procs and everything. Orc miners always have a piece of tithril. And then you get a pickaxe, which you can also mine Tithril with. When you equip it, you right click the wall that you're standing next to, or you do control in the direction of the wall you want to mine. And again, it's your critical modifier. So if you have no critical, you have to roll a 12 with the 2d6 roll. So you won't get very many pieces of the Tithril and the pickaxe will often break before you get any tithril when you don't have any critical modifier. And we have a guy here. Let's see. He's not aggressive. Oh, I am excited. It means he's going to have divine might or divine grace, which are very excellent spells. Divine grace, really good. I think it's the best low level spell regardless of the class you're playing i feel very excited in a completely non-sexual way so you press c to bring up spells and it's under celestial spells now when i cast it i get plus one to my agility charisma physical resistance poison and disease resistance the higher your charisma is the longer the spell will last before you need to recast it. But the armor you're wearing also will lower your casting modifier. However, since my charisma is only 8 now with Divine Grace, it does not matter that I'm wearing chain armor, which allows a maximum casting modifier of 1. If I was doing stamina spells, then I'd want lighter armor. Buffing spells don't matter that much anyways because it's just you have to recast them. It's more with the damaging spells that you want to worry about your casting modifier to begin with. When you're casting spells, you have a chance of miscasting, which can do damage to you. If you're not using a staff, you want to make sure you cast spells slowly because they can do up to 12 damage with the miscast. They don't happen that often, but sometimes you get really unlucky. Here is my thanks to Nathan for teaching me divine grace. Thank you very much, Nathan. I truly, truly appreciate it. <laughs> okay then, now that we're done with that, let's try to do some mining. And we see here that, which often happens, I didn't even get any tithril and the pickaxe broke pretty quickly. That's... Not very uncommon, but at least we tried. So back at down here, got all my crap on the ground, figuring out what I want to sell. And we see here my weapons are almost full. This usually doesn't happen except when I get potions of insight or I have this nice amulet of divination, which fortunately hasn't taken damage yet. I'm not too big on the scrolls of turning and banishment i literally never used either in a critical situation and i can't even use them yet right now so they sell for a lot of money i bought the fire ward amulet since right now i don't have a useful amulet 
and getting set on fire could get me killed pretty quickly. So just to be safe, even though I'm not that big on buying this amulet, because later on it's not going to be very useful at all. If you have the spell Divine Grace like I do, always double check to make sure you have it up so you get that plus one charisma to be able to sell items for that much more. That potion of sickness, one, it doesn't sell for very much and my arcane tab is full in the shop. Two, it's pretty worthless, so I'm not going to keep it with me. Either you'll drink it or you can throw it in an enemy. It will disease you if you're not immune to diseases. So it's pretty much a useless potion. There used to be a lot more in the game, but they removed some of them and added some better potions. My shop's getting pretty full, so I'll have to do an end reset to be able to sell more items pretty soon. Enchanting my ring of haste, D3 healing is worthless. The physical resistance, like I said, I'm not that big on it. And I'm not going to have the ring on at all times. At some point, I probably won't even use it. The charisma is going to be incredibly helpful. Now with nine charisma, this is where you start really making a lot of money, especially with the blessed ring of scholars and amulet of divination. I had a miscast there. It was a positive miscast in that it had a positive effect and it made me invisible for probably about 12, 13 turns. When you're invisible, enemies won't attack you or move towards you unless you attack them first. Unless you're standing next to them, then they'll attack you part of the time, but not all the time. So being invisible is really good and scrolls of invisibility are one of the most useful scrolls in the game resetting the dungeon seeing what we get got a demon and a loot hoarder i'll get into the loot hoarders in a second i searched to make sure i didn't land on traps and then i'm going to let them kill each other it'll probably be the demon but loot hoarders can at times hit hard i found with the loot hoarder dead going to kill the demon An important item to note with invisibility when you move, it only takes invisibility down by one turn. But when you attack or use phase shift, it will take down the invisibility by about 50%. So say you have 100 turns of invisibility, it might cut it to about 50. I think it's a little bit less than half, but it's close to half. I leveled up. So now with my stamina being nine and then the ring of fortitude, I got three more life because now I get a plus four modifier to my life since I'm level 10. Now that everything's dead around me in my vicinity, we'll go to the loot hoarder. Loot hoarders will always have a charm on them. If you have runes unlocked, which you unlock by using four wands of wishing in one game, which is, it's pretty hard to do. So it's one of the last things you'll probably end up doing that unlocks something, but they'll always have runes on them up to three and then they'll have enchanted equipment. The horseshoe I got, once I identify it, it will make me immune to stun effects. Whenever it's in my inventory, you don't equip it. You just leave it in your inventory with charms. Stun is different than paralyze. I found that out the hard way. So if you're immune to paralyze, you're not immune to stun. The way you get stunned is when something uses shield bash on you. So it's not a super important thing to be immune to, but it's nice to have. There is one encounter that uses shield bash and the guys, some of the guys in the last battle when you fight the king also use shield bash. That's actually the only time I've ever died on the king. I got shield bashed and was in line of sight of a lot of enemies and I died, which is very frustrating dying on the king. Passing a few turns so I can identify my charm. And my amulet took damage. So now if it takes damage again, it will break. I'm going to be much more selective with the items I identify now because I want it to be able to last until I get literacy common. And then I'll probably use that scroll of blessing on it to repair it. Unless I find some potions of insight, then I might not worry about repairing it. I might bless, say, a piece of studded leather armor so I can put two enchants on it instead. An important item to note on amulets that you use, 
make sure you don't have cursed items equipped because the amulets take damage off of when you do a critical failure, which is when you roll a two on the 2d6. When you have cursed items, it will then make it so you have to roll a three if you have one cursed item and so on. So make sure you don't have cursed items on or items that you don't have identified like I did earlier in the game. I had unidentified items on when I was using it. I should have waited till I identified those before having them equipped. Got a fire elemental. I made sure I re-equipped Divine Grace or recast Divine Grace. And we got a target, which makes me very happy. So now we can finally get us aim shot. Just a reminder that you can have two sets of hotkeys. By pressing tab, you switch between the two. For hotkey set one, I do my attacks and such. And for hotkey set two, I do my buffs like Divine Grace. Because later on, I have six buffs I'll use when I get all the spells that I use to buff myself. There's actually more. You actually really don't even have enough hotkeys, in my opinion. I wish it would go up to 10, not just six. But yeah, this way at least you can have two sets, one for buffs and then one for attacks. Looks like Pear figured out the last of the legendary weapon requirements. It's always nice to chat with people when you're playing online. Re-equipping my proper jewelry before going to the next floor. And we have a crossbowman. Where you can go back up and down safely. Redoing my divine grace a bit. I didn't cast it enough before I went down. Let's see if the guy's aggressive. Double checking my equipment. Yes, he's aggressive. Crossbowmen can hurt a lot. Fortunately, they only attack every other turn. They're the one archer that can be pretty scary at times. Don't forget that if possible, you should always go back up the stairs to Fooley Hill. And if you do control and five or control and left click on yourself, you'll heal to full life without having to keep on doing it unless a enemy comes around and disturbs you. Just reminding you about the Heroes of Hallwood, so check out all the graves. I'll probably start breaking them soon, too. I, I'm just a little bit paranoid about getting undead. I got some studded leather armor, which makes me happy. I'm going to switch to this once I identify it and make sure it's not cursed. And the studded armor is not cursed, so I shall use it, and I'm not going to use my chain armor anymore. Going to enchant my studded armor. I don't need sleep. D3 healing power is worthless. And the energy drains basically worthless. Wow. I'll have to re-enchant that. By the way, I was really stupid and forgot to equip my ring of haste to get the plus one charisma. That was nine gold I could have had that I don't have now. So I'm really stupid. And I'm very annoyed by the enchant I got on my armor. So I did another floor. It was boring. I got enough money so I can re-enchant my chest piece. And I got stamina, life drain, which is crap. The stamina is not bad. I'm going to go with the frost resistance, though, just because I don't have a ring of elements yet. And having more frost resistance will be nice. If it was on the helmet, I wouldn't choose it because you almost never get hit in the head. And so I would not do it on the helmet, but on the armor, it's useful. The stamina is okay, but when you get stamina from an enchantment, you don't get the extra life modifier. So I wouldn't get four life for having that stamina. I just get one life. It's still not bad to have. Especially if you're a mage, you still get the increase in rolls for your spells or doing things like recovering your life and trap checks. It's just you don't get the extra life like you would from stamina from leveling up. I'm going to jump to the left here. So I put the snakes in between me and that warrior. That way the warrior will attack the snakes. It's a little bit risky because I could still end up on a trap. But this way I play it. It's a little bit safer play in my opinion. And now that the warrior's dead, 
I'm switching to my melee weapon to use less arrows, and I take them both down without getting any damage done to me. There's a door down into my right. You should always explore rooms you're in fully before you open up any doors, because there could still be enemies lurking around, and then I'd get attacked from multiple directions possibly. So always explore the area you're in fully before opening the door. The exception to this rule is with encounters when you're trying to avoid them. I'll get into that in a little while. For now, you want to explore everywhere fully. I found some chain armor and a sword. Remember that you want to pick up items that when you buy them cost a hundred or more, but I like to pick up weapons because you also have to sell those that sell for 75 gold or more. So swords are worth 75 gold when you buy one and so are flails. And once you get insight potions, it's a good idea to pick up axes and maces, which are 50 gold when you buy them. So keep that in mind. That way you can make lots of money. Buffing myself before I go to the next floor. And also I need to double check my equipment, make sure I got all the right pieces of equipment equipped. This floor was pretty boring. I'm going to cut out most of the straightforward stuff now that I've already gone over. This is a little not straightforward, so I want both the orcs to attack the fire elemental, but also because right there I figured they were going to kill it, I want to attack them instead of waiting to see who dies because there's two of the orcs. Otherwise, I might have got killed if I didn't start attacking before they killed the fire elemental. Sometimes though, a fire elemental could kill both of them, but I wouldn't be that worried because it'd probably be about dead and I should be able to kill that on its own without a problem. I can hear someone through the door and we have a human. He's not aggressive. This is another reason I don't like having pets besides the dog. It will turn all NPCs aggressive, including the shop floors. If you have things like bats or bears and stuff like that. So you can't ever talk to them and get the spells. And so especially early on to be able to get the divine spells. I like to not ever have any pets for that reason. Besides the dog. I got turned undead. It's not really going to be useful at all for me. It's only useful if you're a mage uh, and you can attack from a distance. I can't attack from a distance unless I have the spell divine reach. So it's worthless for me turn undead by the way has a chance of instant killing undead when you use it on them and the chance of it happening is based off of your charisma modifier but again i can't use it at a distance and if it doesn't insta kill them it won't do very much damage because it does damage but because i don't have focus cast it won't do very much damage for me so it's again not very useful but I now have another spell off my checklist, which will be good for once I learn the Celestial Spell Tree, which I'm going to learn at some point if this character does not die. I have another pickaxe here. It's damaged again, so it will break after taking damage one time. But I'll demonstrate some mining again, and I got some Tithril this time. The first time you break the wall, it turns into a boulder. So you can mine each part of the wall twice. And this is useful if you need a boulder, say, to reset a floor. You can get a boulder this way. Or if you want to get more experience for pushing the boulders into traps. Or sometimes there will be a spike trap in the middle of the hallway. And that way you can use the pickaxe to make a boulder and then close that spike trap. So it can actually be helpful to keep a pickaxe on you. But the problem is if you're not strength, sometimes even if the pickaxe isn't damaged, you still won't get a boulder before the pickaxe breaks. So it can be frustrating. But if you're playing strength, it's a good way to get boulders if you need them. I'm lighting the torches and disarming traps. So I get to level 12 to get my next talent point. That way I can take literacy common. Silent move, which you get from a campfire, is also... A good option at level 12. I'm going to go with Literacy Common. Which now with this talent. I can use wands and scrolls. I'm going to keep the scroll of summoning on me. That way I can summon 
a demon to be a meat shield in case I get in a bad situation. The scroll of dispel isn't very useful. There's just one encounter that it can be helpful on. Otherwise, I don't really like it. Since they are talking about poisons here in chat, I'm going to go over poisons a bit more. Again, you have to have the poison identified or you will drink it if it's an unidentified potion and it's a poison. Potions of all types have six levels. When you identify it, you'll only see whether it's diluted, a regular one which just says the name of the potion or a potent potion. You can then tell what power level it is by the price if it's the stronger of the two power levels, if it's say diluted, there's two levels to that, there's two levels to normal, and then two levels to potent. And the only way you can tell for sure is by the price of the potion and knowing what it would sell for at that charisma level, or if you buy it back, what it costs for you to buy it back. Then with poisons, when you apply it to your weapon, there are four power levels that can get applied to your weapon. There's zero, one, two, and three. The weakest of the poisons will only put a power level of zero and the strongest will put a power level of three. When you have a power level of zero on your weapon, there's a one in 36 chance that that poison will go away when you hit an enemy. You have to roll a two on a 2d6 roll then, if you have a power level of 1, you add 1 to the 2 of the 2d6 roll for the poison to degrade to a power level of 0. So if you roll a 2 or a 3, when the game rolls the 2d6 roll, the poison will degrade to a power level of 0. It won't go away, it will be degraded to a power level of 0. So the stronger the poison, the longer the total length of the poison stays on your weapon. But generally level zero will be on your weapon the longest with a level two poison you then have to roll a two a three or a four for the poison to degrade to a level one poison so it won't go to level zero it will go to a level one poison if it's level two if it's level three you have to roll a two three four or five for the poison then to degrade to a level two poison also, the power level of the poison matters on how often the poison takes effect when it's on the enemy. So when the enemy's poisoned, the stronger the power level of the poison on your weapon, the more often it will proc and say do damage if it's a deadly poison. And it will also do more damage if it's deadly poison. So the power level also matters for how badly the enemy is affected by that poison. Here we have two orcs. The orc miners don't charge and it's far away. So I want to kill the archer first, not the miner. The orc miner I can easily get away from. So my priorities, the archer and my armor just took some damage. So that's frustrating. Now I got to worry about it breaking the next time it takes damage and see how I'm just moving away. I don't even have to jump. Plus this isn't a good spot to jump because of the angles but I can easily get away. So I'm getting as far away as possible to recover my energy. I didn't recover very much energy. Remember that you recover energy when you move as well. So I take them down don't get much damage, but unfortunately my armor got damaged. I also was an idiot and I forgot to cast the spell Divine Grace before I went to the next floor. So that would have made the battle much easier. And there I took damage because I had no energy. You can cast spells without energy and you will take one to three damage every time you cast a spell without energy, but you're still able to cast the spells. So that's important to know if you're playing a maze, especially because sometimes you'll have to keep on casting spells even when you're out of energy. There's going to be a hidden room on this floor. I know it because there is no treasure anywhere else. So there's going to be a hidden room and I failed to disarm the alarm trap and I got a human archer and they broke my armor, so now I'm going to take a lot of damage and hopefully I kill them and I almost die. I'm going to hightail it to the next floor. I'm not going to unequip my ring of haste in case there's another enemy. I think there's always only one enemy if there is an enemy in 
the hidden rooms on these floors, but want to play it as safe as possible because I am about to die. Fortunately, I had another undamaged piece of studded leather armor and it's not cursed. So I'm going to enchant this. I got charisma, which is good. Don't need the confuse. Otherwise, I would take that. The blind's okay, but don't really need it. The charisma will make me a lot more money now. With 10 charisma, I'm really going to start raking in the money. Right here, I miscast a spell. It did 6 damage. It can do up to 12 damage when you miscast a spell. But that's not the only effect. Like, there, it drained my energy. It can also have positive effects. Like we saw before, it turned me invisible. If you're using a staff, it happens much less often, which is why at low levels, you want to use a staff. Here, I got a scroll of enchanting. It will do a random enchant on any piece of equipment you use it on. It sells for a lot of money, so it's generally best just to sell it when you get one of those, since it only does a random enchant. If you find a blessed scroll of enchanting, it will bless any piece of equipment you use it on. So blessed scrolls of enchanting are one of the most rare and valuable items in the entire game. Preparing my way to the next floor here, and we have my death. I am not going to do this. I would get pinched in by the two orcs and the demon. Not a good way for me to get them to kill each other. Also, there might be another guy around a corner or something. This is a no-win situation. I could get shocked also by the orc shaman. So I am going to do the prudent thing and run like a scared little girl and not do that floor. My shop is full of almost every item type. So I'm going to stay at the inn, which will then reset the items so I can sell more items. And also this is the way I'm going to be able to reset my dungeon. I could also push in a boulder to reset it, but since I need to stay at the end anyways, I'll just do this. And now I can reset my dungeon, checking out all the items. I'll probably buy that shock ward to get shock immunity. That way I don't have to worry about something like that orc shaman that I saw on the floor of death. This scroll of blessing I have here, I thought about using it on my studded armor to make it blessed. Rare, I can't do rings and amulets, but it can repair amulets. And so I decided to use it on my amulet of divination. That way I don't have to worry about it blowing up if it takes damage again. And I can make more money this way without having to spend money to identify items. I have another piece of studded armor. I want to enchant it to get agility or life, preferably. But unfortunately, I get disease resistance charm immunity and sleep immunity. I don't need the sleep. The disease resistance isn't that useful. It's useful for warlocks and demon mages, but other than that, it's not that useful. I'll do charm, but I probably will try to re-enchant it or get the riveted armor if I get the schematic for that. Hopefully I'll get the schematic for that soon and be able to craft that. Here I'm demonstrating how I make money with the divination amulet. You don't need a ring of sustenance or a blessed ring of sustenance. That's why it's good to bring all the mushrooms you can back and you can use those to get extra food and water. And then if you're not trying to do the mushroom heritage, you can eat all the other food and water you find in the dungeon to pass turns to be able to identify the more valuable items in the dungeon with the divination amulet. Even though the weapons sell for much less than the armor, I can hardly fit any armor compared to the weapons. I can identify a lot of weapons. And with 10 charisma, the weapons are still pretty valuable. And so even the axes and the maces, I'm going to identify these and sell them because I need to be able to do another in reset to be able to fit in some more items to sell. Now I'm going to sell the weapons and I will get quite a bit of money because now that my charisma is 10 with all the enchants and divine grace, double checking the items to make sure there's not anything I want to buy. I'm not going to do any enchants yet until I reset the in again. There's nothing else I want to buy that I see here. Yeah, nothing else. So I'm going to reset the in. Also remember your encounter rate increases. Now my encounter rate is 17. That's the two swords with the approximately 17 percentage. 
looking at the jewelry, I might buy the Amulet of Protection, going to buy the Ring of Elements right now, and then work on trying to get an enchant for it. Let us see what enchant we get on the Ring of Elements. All right, we got Knockback, which is worthless. Paralysis is good to have end game, but I don't want it right now. I'll just go with more physical resistance. I really want life and agility, but the game will not give it to me. I'm also going to have to juggle my jewelry quite a bit now. The Ring of Fortitude I want to leave on pretty much at all times, but there might be occasions where I'll switch that and have, say, the Ring of Elements and the Ring of Haste on, depending on the situation and if I already took damage. And frustratingly, with another enchant on my chest, I don't get agility or life. I'll take the blind immunity, and I'm going to use that armor now instead of the one with charisma, except when I sell items, because I don't want the one with charisma to break, and having the blind immunity can be useful. So now, after buffing up and making sure my food and water is full and re-equipping my proper equipment, I'm going to be resetting the dungeon, but you'll have to wait for the next exciting episode of Dragon Ball Z. Wait, sorry. I mean, on my next part of my Rogue's Tale guide. This is fire, and we're on fire.